Welcome, hope you're doing well. We're going to talk about the Moto Gondola life story of Imran Khan with the five character traits and reveal those highs and lows. Hopefully, it will inspire or even motivate you as we only judge a person by their character, not race, color or religion. So please click on the subscribe button below if you are new and join our Moto Gondola family. I have to declare at this stage that Imran's story will not be discussed in a normal chronological order as it's the character we're defining, not his life journey. So please stick with us as it's all here to see the difference he has made from philanthropy to politics. My name is Bobby A. Said. I am the founder of The Emma Show. And as you can see from these articles, Imran didn't have an easy time. However, we are not into fake news as we judge a person by their deeds, as shown through our own association with him through our 1992 university fundraising event that has led to motoculturalism. I met Imran Khan as a charity man, not as a politician, whilst working at University of London after completing my master's. And we raised thousands to help him in his quest to build a modern cancer hospital for the poor. Here are some front page publications that has Imran as its lead feature and followed by millions after his charity success and to become Prime Minister of Pakistan to fight political corruption. He has stood up against Islamophobia that has taken the world by storm, which has affected many Muslims living in the West. There are 1.3 billion Muslims in this world. There are millions of Muslims living in, in other countries, European countries, and the US as minorities. Islamophobia since 9-11 has, has grown at a pace where it is alarming. Human communities live together. There should be understanding amongst them. But Islamophobia is creating a division. Muslim women, Wearing hijab, it's become an issue. It's become an issue in some countries. Hijab is some sort of a weapon. A woman can take off her clothes in countries, but she can't put on more clothes. How is this happening? Because of Islamophobia. And where, how did this Islamophobia start? After 9-11. And why did it start? Because certain Western leaders equated terrorism with Islam, Islamic terrorism, radical Islam. What is radical Islam? There is only one Islam, and that is the Islam we follow of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu There is no other Islam. Radical Islam, Islamic terrorism, what message did they send to people in the West? And why is there Islam, uh, Islamophobia? How is a person in New York, in the Midwest, in the US, in European capital, how is he going to distinguish between who is a moderate Muslim and who is a radical Muslim? Because Terrorism has nothing to do with any religion. Let's hope that human rights is once again made a priority to tackle continued discrimination because Muslim lives matter as well from the global far right hatred. We will show our unique footage of Imran's speech at our event as recorded for internal use only. It will highlight his very charismatic appeal as a real leader. He has recognized talent wherever it may come from and was shown throughout his caricating and charitable career. Here is a statement by him on your screen that highlights his own personal objectives then and defines him as the person we all know. What I had conceived six years ago is now becoming a reality. I have to say there were a lot of times in between where I began to despair, but with the encouragement and help I have received at home and abroad, I am now confident that my dream will come true. Providing such an institution in Pakistan is just a beginning towards fighting cancer, which after all, a disease that has no age, color, creed or international boundaries. Obviously, a lot more work needs to be done 
It is an enormously challenging project and needs mass participation. However, with each and every donation, we are moving a step closer to our goal. I would like to thank the students of University of London, the South Asian Forum and Pida Ayub Sayed, known as Bobby, for all their worthy endeavours. Imran Khan. Unknowingly, in 1982, I also became a victim of cancer in March 2007. However, I was very lucky that it was discovered early and had the loving support of both my parents to recover. So please donate to those cancer charities nearer you and let's beat this deadly disease. That has taken the lives of many good people we know. As they predict, one out of three could be diagnosed with cancer. Imran has had such a widespread career and a proud Muslim moving from sports stardom then charity. We believe it would be good to mention those five unique characteristics which continue to shine on him regardless of the areas Imran decides to take us as one of our Emma supporters. We all agree that corruption is ultimately a social cancer that equally destroys lives leading to chronic poverty. What I do now is do what is appropriate at this stage and leave you and Imran Khan together. Imran Khan! Ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I would like to say how grateful I am to the SOAS students as well as the South Asian Forum for organizing this event. Um, I want to say that organizing events is not easy and I want, if it's any consolation to Bobby, because I know he's uh, suffering tonight. I know he's, it's been, it hasn't been the easiest evening for him. Uh, it's never easy to organize functions. We, we, had a, we had a dinner some two years back, invited a lot of celebrities. The Duchess of York was uh, our chief guest and the sound system didn't work. So, you know, it's not easy and I fully appreciate what he's done, what Bobby's done and what the committee's done. And for all of you to come here and support uh, our cancer appeal as well as uh, participate in this uh, program. Briefly, I would like to tell you what this uh, hospital is all about. You must have heard about it, but maybe most of you don't realize. Uh, the reason for this hospital is that in a country of 120 million people in Pakistan, uh, we do not possess one cancer hospital. It came as a shock to me. It, must, it might come as a shock to some of you, uh, may, although I've tried my best to let everyone know about this. But it really is amazing that 120 million people, we do not possess one complete cancer facility. At the moment, there are something like 200,000 known cases of cancer every year. Now, this is excluding cancer which exists in the villages, which people never even know and they die of it. But the cancer known is 200,000, about 200,000 cases, fresh cases every year. Now, out of these, we estimated, because there's no data in Pakistan about cancer, but we've, we estimated that barely 20% get treated. So the rest 80%, you, uh, I hope that, and I wish that none of you have gone through what the sort of things cancer does and how it kills people, but it is one of the worst experiences anyone, especially the people it leaves behind. I mean, the patient dies in agony, but the people which are left behind suffer a lot longer. And so 80% of our people have no access to treatment, and the treatment, even if they do get to a facility, it's the most expensive treatment given. Now, in rupees, it costs, for, for something like three weeks chemotherapy course, it costs 21,000 rupees. Now, if you know that, you know, most people in Pakistan, maybe they earn 500, 700 rupees a month, and what they must go through. So that is what inspired me because it was my mother's illness. But actually, when I went to the hospitals and I realized I was vulnerable because I realized what I was going through. And when I saw other people suffering who were poor, who labored all day and still couldn't afford anything, uh, a, a, a simple medicine, that's what inspired me. And Number one, hard working. Imran Khan was born in Lahore. Pakistan on the 5th of October 1953 and has four sisters, being the only son of Ikramullah Khan Niazi, who was a civil engineer, and Shaka Khanum, his mother who had later died of cancer. 
His paternal family are Paktun descent and belong to the Nazi tribe, while his mother belonged to the Bakari tribe. This is why, like most countries in the world, they have their own diverse ethnic makeup, making them multicultural countries on a physical level. But sadly, there seems to be a lack of real recognition of this within society due to their continual racism. His mother's side of the family were cricketers, some of whom had represented Pakistan internationally, such as Javed Baki and Majid Khan. In this, Imran continued the tradition of his mother's side of the family by pursuing a cricket career and became a great cricket player, as stats reveal. He never shied away from any major cricket challenge, being a true leader on the pitch and outside, as witnessed through his long challenge to form his own political party that ultimately won a major general election in Pakistan. At 16, he made his first class cricket debut and was playing for his home teams of Lahore A and Lahore B between 1969 and 70. Then going on to become a student at the University of Oxford, he played for the Oxford Blue team in 1973 and 1975 seasons. Having played for both Lahore and the UK team, he would improve his technique and become known as a fast bowler. His performance during the 1980s and his form would rank him as third in the ICC's all-time test bowling ranking. This was a great achievement to be compared to many of the cricketing legends and his great long-standing rivalry with the England cricket great Ian Botham. While known for being a fast bowler, Imran didn't start off that way. Rather, he had a relatively standard action as a medium pace bowler. Wanting to improve further, he started to remodel his technique to be more aggressive with his new pace. That strengthened his form and to allow him to become a fast bowler that he turned out to be. He would reach his peak in 1982 with nine tests and 62 wickets at 13.92 each, which was the lowest average in test history, with previous 50 wickets during a calendar year. He was now leading from the front, with many Pakistani fast bowlers coming after him, creating a long-standing unbeatable cricket legacy for the country. On top of this, Imran reached the all-rounders triple in 75 tests. The second highest behind Ian Botham's record, he also has the second highest all-time batting average for a test batsman who played at position six in his country's batting order. Even though he had retired in 1992 from cricket, Imran continued to contribute to the sport. He provided cricket analysis for every single World Cup game and has written opinion pieces for various global newspapers about Pakistan's national team in particular. He has also appeared as a cricket commentator on sports networks such as the BBC and Star TV Network in 2004. He was a commentator on 10 sports special live show when the Indian cricket team had toured Pakistan after 14 years. With his vast knowledge of the game and many contacts in India, he would reach out to the Indian government after his election victory as Prime Minister in Pakistan. Uh, of, uh, the other priority we have tried to uh, instill in Pakistan amongst the people is that we must have good relationship with all our neighbours. Because Pakistan at the moment, most of all, needs stability. We need stability to, for economic progress. We need peace. And so for peace, we need ha to have uh, a, 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 a good relationship with our neighbors. So first was me trying to reach out to India. India is, um, you know, uh, a country which we've had turbulent relationship with. But unfortunately, um, uh, because of one issue of Kashmir, uh, whenever we have tried, whenever relationship has got started to move in the right direction with India. Some incident happens, uh, and, and that's all related to Kashmir. We go back to square one. And so we, I, I reached out to uh, my counterpart in India, the Indian Prime Minister, uh, assured him that, you know, we, you, you come one step towards us, we will go two steps towards you, because the biggest problem India and Pakistan face is poverty. 
And the best way we can reduce poverty is if we start trading with each other. Sadly, the present Indian regime did not reciprocate, leaving the region with fears of another conflict through any misadventures. Number two, discipline. Beyond cricket, Imran has been heavily involved in politics, where he had even founded his own political party. Pakistan Tariqa Insaf, better known as PTI, on the 25th of April 1986. Before this, he had been appointed as the ambassador for tourism in the then caretaker government of Moeen Qureshi, until the government had been disbanded. His efforts as a political figure did not end in the 90s. In 2002, he participated in the general election. Even though he did not succeed, he would try again in 2013. But while Nawaz Sharif, Pakistan Muslim League Party Nawaz, had the clear majority, However, Imran's party had emerged as the second largest party by the popular vote. As this is evidence of how Imran has been steadily fortifying a strong relationship with the people of Pakistan as he would take on the corruption by the established politicians that had affected the poorest. After such resilience, he had to push past many obstacles. On the 17th of August 2018, he was appointed as the 22nd Prime Minister of Pakistan by securing 176 votes, thus making him the first person in history of Pakistan to contest and win all five constituencies on the 28th of July 2018 election. Through the first past the post process adopted by the British political system, however, there are rumours of a major change in the Pakistani political system to a presidential one due to the chronic corruption. As Pakistan's Prime Minister, he set out to improve the relationship with United Arab Emirates and Saudi Arabia in 2021. This would be a significant moment as the ties with Saudi Arabia had grown tense due to Pakistan's refusal to provide any military force with the ongoing civil war in Yemen in 2015. This has led to the Saudis agreeing to provide a concessionary loan for building a hydroelectric dam in June 2021, as well as overall support to allow the country to repay its debts. However, it should be noted that China has been Pakistan's greatest cheerleader through the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, known as CPAC, with major development projects throughout Pakistan. This will help to form the modern Silk Road through the Guada port in Balochistan that had served eastern trade routes from China. I am sure that Marco Polo, who had recorded his Far East travels for Europeans, would be proud of this development to support present global trade. He also helped improve relationships with the Gulf states of Kuwait, which confirmed it had lifted a 10-year visa ban on Pakistani nationals, which would mark the first time nationals of Pakistan could obtain family, business or technical visas for Kuwait since 2011. In just two years, a Pakistan Prime Minister had managed to build strong relationship internationally to become a regional player for peace. As witnessed through the peace deal in Afghanistan after 20 years of war with NATO forces, who were stationed there without success against the Taliban. The aftermath of 9-11 wasn't isolated just to Iraq and Afghanistan, but the whole Muslim world as the word terrorism had become a byword for Muslims following Islam. Number three, passion. Imran has proven throughout his life he is not afraid to stand up for what he believes in, regardless of any backlash from cricketers. In 2019, Imran's government launched an anti-corruption campaign which aimed to ensure no amnesty would be given to politicians or relatives who benefited from a politician's patronage. Although he would receive criticism for this as they were perceived to be targeted against his political opponents, members of his own party were not immune as some of his senior members had faced investigation or prosecution. In 2020, he urged Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg to ban Islamophobic content on their platform, speaking out against growing extremism with continued threats towards Muslims around the world by the far right through the social media. In 2021, Imran had initiated dialogue with the Taliban to encourage them to form an inclusive government which would ensure peace in Afghanistan. If it wasn't for his role to bring parties together, it would have been hard for the US to be able to leave in such a peaceful way. 
regardless of some losses. Number one, this is the longest war that the United States has ever fought. It's almost 19 years. Number two, I am one of those who always believed that there was no military solution. Because anyone who knows the history of Afghanistan, you just have to look back at the history. Uh, there was always going to be a political settlement at the end. And I have to compliment uh, uh, President Trump because he has now forced people to end the war, to have a, have a settlement. And that's where I think uh, uh, Pakistan is playing a very important role because Pakistan has a 1,500-mile uh, border with the Afghanistan and all the areas where the trouble is, which is the eastern side of Afghanistan. So this is a critical time. I'm looking forward to my talks with uh, President Trump. We have our military uh, uh, leadership here because this is obviously a security situation. And what we want is understanding between the two countries. Uh, I can assure President Trump that whatever we will be saying will be the apps. We will be straight with them. There will no, never be any question of any doubt on Pakistan's intent, because in, uh, apart from Afghanistan, the country that wants peace in Afghanistan more than any other country is Pakistan, because we get directly affected by it. Mm. And Pakistan needs stability. We have had uh, 15 years of uh, fighting this war on terror, over 70,000 Pakistani casualties, over $150 billion lost to the economy. So we desperately want peace. And I'm happy that uh, President Trump has pushed this forward. It's clear that Imran Khan also thinking of many innocent victims in the Pakistan tribal areas. This has been true before he became Prime Minister during the war against the Soviet Union. And in 2012, he led a protest against the US drone missile strikes in some of Pakistan's most volatile areas that would have led to terrorist action. The protest involved thousands and was a two-day road trip from Islamabad to the village of Kotai in South Uristan. And the then Pakistani government intervened with the security forces en route. Imran thanked his supporters and made it clear that the world had got the message. This was a highly reported campaign in history. This issue reached many of the news publications around the world, including the BBC, Reuters and Al Jazeera, to name a few. Number four, confidence. From cricketer to politician, it is clear that Imran has been a strong leader. Since his younger years, when he was captain of Pakistan national cricket team, he led them to glory in 1982 during the Cricket World Cup in Australia against England. He was only 30 years old when he took over the captaincy of the Pakistan national cricket team from Javed Mimdad. Additionally, he led Pakistan to his first ever Test Series win in India in 1987 and then followed by Pakistan's first series victory in England in the same year. In the team's second match, Imran led the first test win on English soil for 28 years at Laws in 1982. A great achievement when taken on board, the racism British Pakistanis had faced, so gave some sense of pride with their heritage. This is especially so relevant, taking on board the racism Azam Rafiq faced at Yorkshire Cricket Club from an English sport that was coined as a gentleman's game. In 2002, he participated in the general election to battle for the seat in the National Assembly. Serving in the region of Mirwali until 2007, he would then be voted as a parliamentarian again in 2013, which by that time, it was clear that even before leading the country, Pakistan has had tremendous faith in his leadership skills and his ability to serve the country to overcome the many problems with corruption and above all, poverty. When he became Pakistan Prime Minister, he was listed on the Time 100 list in 2019, which recognised his qualities as a leader. According to Imran himself, he cites, a good leader is always selfless and that leadership only comes when you start thinking of others. As stated during his visit to Dubai in 2017 with his many other party members, Example of this can be seen through his initiative to allow Indian Sikh pilgrims through the Karapur Corridor, linking them to a newly constructed Gurdwara for Baba Guru Nanak. Imran has also planted over 1 billion trees in 2013 
as part of a conservation project to reduce the effects of climate change on a country that is sixth most vulnerable to the present climate changes. There is a serious risk of a water war with neighboring India, with failures to abide by the Indus Water Treaty Agreement signed in 1960. The Sachin Glacier ongoing conflict is connected to the present water dispute, since both countries' independence. Number five, humility. In the 1990s, prior to his full-on political career, Imran served as a UNICEF Special Representative for Sports and Promoted Health and immunization programs in Bangladesh, Pakistan, Sri Lanka and Thailand, as he showed an interest in health and people's welfare alongside Princess Diana, a long-standing friend. In 1991, he led a fundraising campaign to set up the Pakistan Cancer Hospital, the Shukat Khanum Memorial Trust Cancer Hospital, in the memory of his late mother who died from cancer. The hospital was expanded to include a research centre and considered to be one of the leading institutions for free cancer care and treatment in the world. He opened a second hospital in Peshawar in 2015 and then another in Karachi and founded the Namal College in 2008 that is associated with University of Bradford where I had studied. He became their Chancellor for many years prior as Bradford does have a higher British Pakistani community. He also pushed for an increase for energy production and halted non-renewable energy production in 2020 with the aim of making Pakistan a mostly renewable country by 2030. Imran had also partnered with the Bukush Foundation to light up villages in Dara Ghazi Khan, Minawali and Dara Ismail Khan under the Lighting a Million Lives project in 2013. The campaign established several solar charging stations in selected off-grid villages and provided them with solar lanterns. This initiative was undertaken when his party had won the regional elections covering the Northwest Frontier Province and then the national government itself. When in London, he works with the Lord Taverners, a charity which is in the UK, leading youth cricket and disability sports charity which aims to give people a sporting chance. It's clear wherever he is, in the world, Imran always brings something to the table to make the lives of those around him better, like helping the US leave Afghanistan as President Trump had requested. In summary, Imran Khan is a highly respectable figure, not only as a professional cricketer, a charity campaigner and now as Prime Minister of Pakistan. His success in these fields has set many new standards in Pakistan, as he had belief in his ability right from the start. He is deeply committed to his ventures, whether they are to help those who are less fortunate in the world or those in his country. We hope we have brought more understanding of Imran and his merits as a humanitarian. His outstanding contribution to the sporting world, politics, philanthropy and as an author are the reasons why we celebrate him as our Emma supporter. He shares the multicultural values we stand for by highlighting his charity work and the need to promote true equality at an early age. Let's hope that peace prevails between India and Pakistan as it will break many South Asian hearts in Britain and around the world with two armed nuclear powers at loggerheads. The ultimate key to this would be to settle the Kashmir issue because it's a time bomb ready to explode for those many reasons explained earlier. आप आजाद हैं आजाद रहें आप लोग इस मुल्क पाकिस्तान में अपनी अपनी इबादत गाहों मस्जिदों या मंदिरों में जाने के लिए आपका मजहब क्या है जात क्या है धर्म क्या है इसका at the life and the property and the religious belief should be 
fully protected by the state at any cost. I pray to God that this critical moment he may guide us and enable us to discharge our responsibility in a wise and a statesmanlike manner. Why don't you leave us a comment and let us know if we have missed anything as we have only touched on his great life journey. We would really appreciate a like or even a subscribe below if possible and please donate on Patreon however little the amount to support this channel's ongoing mission to undertake our motocultural campaigns. And remember, it's what's inside that counts, a motto we have used at the Emmas. As Imran Khan has proven, we can all try to make a difference as part of our life legacy. Even if you do come from a country riddled with corruption. However, it can't be ignored that Pakistan was the country that helped to win the Cold War for the West. And clear fact that seems to be ignored by many. So until next time, thank you for watching and keep it multicultural. We don't want the 21st century to lead us to another Cold War. So let's promote peace.